Ooh. Okay, time to get started on this project. What's it about? Um, no, I just have to talk about this case where Supreme Court went back on the word. Wait, what do you mean? Yeah, apparently the Supreme Court decided that the government went against their own law when they ruled that Congress had overstepped their power regarding the Commerce Clause. When was this? Well, it all started in the year 1992. Let me explain. Starting from the beginning, the Lopez vs. United States case started after an incident regarding a student bringing a pistol and same ammunition to school. Lopez was arrested under the Texas law that prohibited carrying guns on school property. However, these charges were dropped, but not in favor for Lopez. It so happened that the charges were dropped because in addition to violating state law, Lopez was also charged for violating the Gun-Free School Zones Act of 1990, a federal law. Because he was found guilty of breaking the federal law, he was subjected to six months in prison. Though, this was not the end of the story. In the case of Lopez versus the United States, Lopez claimed that the Gun-Free School Zones Act itself is unconstitutional, therefore should not be charged with federal crimes. His lawyers argued that the gun regulation in school property is a power held by a state and state only, and that nowhere in the Constitution does it say Congress has the ability to pass legislation regarding guns. Basically, it is not the federal government's right to pass such laws. If that is the case, then how is the Gun-Free School Zones Act even passed in the first place? Congress used what's called the Commerce Clause. The Commerce Clause states that the Congress has the ability to regulate commerce among several states. Their justification was that guns in schools affects interstate commerce and that guns lead to violence, which stops people from wanting to cross certain states, which ultimately ends up in having negative impact on commerce. This sounds like a dramatic extension in power because it kind of is. Lopez's side argued that the Commerce Clause was an overstep in power and shouldn't have been able to be passed after the beginning. In a 5-4 decision, the Supreme Court sided with Lopez with the majority opinion being if Congress could use this Commerce Clause to have a play in part in regulation of guns in schools, then Congress could potentially use the Commerce Clause to justify more. The importance of this case is not about freedom to bear arms. The importance of this case is that it shows the balance of power between state and federal. This ruling shows that the court sides with state power, thereby not tilting the balance to be a federal tyranny.